Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to my garden. Janie here. Today I am in my front yard, and today my plan was to get a lot of fertilizing done. So I did a video a couple weeks ago for my Gardening for Beginners project, and um, I talked all about how I fertilize my annuals, how I fertilize my shrubs and everything like that, but that was kind of more... Um, like overall fertilizing, general fertilizing. I wanted to do a video for you guys so that you could see um, a little bit more about how I do specific fertilizing. Um, specifically for roses, my potted up improved Meyer lemon tree. I'm gonna do my cut flower garden and then this is kind of fertilizing. It's not really, I just, I have to do it and I wanted to put it in a video to show you guys. Um, I'm potting up my tiny tomatoes. So even like a month or two before, I introduced you guys to a tiny tomato project that I'm doing this year. And what that is, is it's actually micro dwarf tomatoes. Um, I was introduced to this by Jolly Garden 720 on Instagram. I just thought it was the coolest idea. So basically micro dwarf tomatoes are tomatoes that will grow and thrive and produce in like an eight inch pot. So something that you can put on your patio. So if you are limited in space, like I am, you can plant a whole bunch of different varieties just you know in in not that big of pots so i bought about 10 or 11 different varieties of micro dwarf tomatoes i sowed them and then now they're ready to be potted up and um so what i'm planning to do why i'm throwing it in my fertilizing video which is a stretch i know but um i'm gonna pot them up with some sure start and um i think what i'm gonna do because i have extras i think what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna pot a couple up without the sure start and then a couple or you know like half of them without the sure start half of them with the sure start just so that we can see the difference between when you use the starter fertilizer and how important it is for the roots you know and all that kind of stuff I was talking about it in that fertilizing video about how um, phosphorus doesn't travel in soil very well so especially when you have a young seedling with very immature roots you need to to provide or it's really good to provide phosphorus right up against those roots to allow for you know the most growth and the healthiest plant and and um uh the strongest plant that's going to withstand um, disease, you know, and stuff like that. So I thought that that would kind of be a fun experiment to add into my tiny tomato project. So again, this is a lot of stuff. I keep doing this with videos. I'm sorry, you guys. Um, I just, you know, it's that time of year. There's a ton of stuff to do. So I'm going to put timestamps below in the description. So if you guys want to skip to a certain point, um, just to see how I fertilize or how I'm planning to fertilize a certain thing this year, you guys can look down below for that. So I think first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get started on my um my heirloom roses i bought them that's the company heirloom roses eden climbing rose okay you guys so we're out here um we are by my kinsman garden supply lattice arch and on either side of this arch i planted two baby eden climbing roses and i purchased those last like late summer um from uh, heirloomroses.com. I'll link them below. I'm super happy with them. And I will tell you guys, they were out of stock, out of stock, out of stock. And then what I did is I finally just put my name on the wait list. And within a few weeks, they contacted me and said that they were ready to ship them. So I would say if you guys are looking for roses and they keep saying out of stock, just put your name on the waiting list. And you know, my thought is, is that they, those, whoever's on the wait list gets first dibs for the new roses that come. Um, so that's what I'm planning to do from now on whenever I get, whenever I want to purchase new roses. Um, anyway, so as for fertilizing these guys, so um, before I get started, I just want to say I am no expert on roses. I've grown some roses before, but not really seriously. These guys are the first roses that I actually like care about, if that, that makes sense. Um, you know, I, I'm actually gonna tend to and not just, you know, throw them in my garden and not really pay attention. Really, every other rose that I've had has been in a house has been there already so I've kind of inherited it um, from the previous owners so I haven't really cared too much about it. Look how pretty my tulips look. Yeah, <laughs> there's even more coming. Oh it looks so good. 
Anyway, so um, so I just wanted to say I'm no expert on roses. If you guys have suggestions, I would appreciate them in the comments section. You know, any suggestions I can get would be great. I just wanted to bring you guys along on my uh, Eden Climber journey. They say that this is supposed to get about 10 feet tall, so wouldn't that be amazing on this lattice arch this year? You know, and, and I, I'm not expecting it to get 10 feet, but I'm definitely going to try. So on the Heirloom Roses website, they have a ton of really good information about fertilizing your rose. And probably the main thing and the biggest deal that they made about is a first year rose like this one, you do not want to fertilize it with granular fertilizer. Um, so you can't just take rose tone and spread it on or anything like that. They say that that will actually void the warranty that they have on their roses because they want you to fertilize it with a liquid, a gentle liquid fertilizer for the first year. Year two and beyond, they say, go ahead with the granular fertilizer. That's fine. But the first year they want you to do a liquid fertilizer. And what they recommended is a fish fertilizer. They have their own fish fertilizer. I didn't end up purchasing that one um, just because I didn't want to pay for shipping. But uh, I found this one at my local garden center, Neptune's Harvest. I'll try and find it on Amazon and link it below. But basically this is a fish and seaweed fertilizer. I've seen people use this before, you know, and kind of rave about it. So I'm excited to try this. I think it'll be good. And what, uh, what it says is it, um, it says an eighth a cup per gallon of water. So I'm just going to put um, about an eighth a cup of this into my watering can and then water these guys. And my plan is to do that uh, every four weeks. Uh, Heirloom Roses says that you should do it every four to six weeks, but I just put it on my gardening calendar for every four weeks. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fertilize these guys. So roses are super, super heavy feeders. It is important that you fertilize them, that you feed them, um, which will allow for growth and then also um, uh, like blooms and then uh, warding off any diseases or anything like that. Let me show you the other one. All right, so here's my other Eden climber over here. This one's a little bit further away from the fence, but I'm just gonna start training it um, to climb up the fence as it starts growing. And you can see there's little new leaflets on it, so it's ready to start getting fertilized. And then the other thing I wanted to say is I'm gonna be doing this fertilizing every four weeks they say every four to six weeks and then year two you can continue with the fer the liquid fertilizer or you can switch to a granular fertilizer like a uh, rose tone or something like that um, and you can do that every two to three weeks is what heirloom roses website says um, so I'll probably just stick with the fish fertilizer since I have it um, you know and to me it's easier to do every four weeks than every two to three weeks so that's my plan. Oh, and then the other thing is you want to stop fertilizing six to eight weeks before your first frost date in the in the fall slash winter. So all of this stuff I've already inputted into my gardening calendar so I don't even have to think about it. Um, you know, it just, it says on there what day. I know I have to come out. I know I have to fertilize this. So let me go ahead and get this fertilizer all mixed up this fertilizer all mixed up and then we will fertilize these guys. <clears throat> I think I'm just gonna estimate because I really don't want to use my kitchen measuring thing for this gross stuff. Okay, so this is two gallons. I'll probably do a fourth a cup. Guys, this stuff is stinky. Okay, so that is it for fertilizing my roses today. Let's move on to my potted lemon tree. Okay, you guys, it's, it's kind of getting warm out here. Um, so I'm gonna move on to talking about how I'm planning to fertilize my improved Meyer lemon tree. I bought this tree from my garden center uh, last 
late summer kind of. So I put it in the pot. Meyer lemon trees, they will get about 10 feet tall. They're not very big trees, but if you keep them in a smaller pot, they're obviously gonna get stunted. Their growth is gonna get stunted. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm probably gonna pot this one up one, one more time to a bigger pot, um, but not much more than that because I don't want it to get to be 10 feet tall, which here in California, lemon trees do fantastic. So I don't want it to be this giant tree that takes over the backyard. Um, so I've only fertilized this one time when I planted it last year, just because it was getting too close to, um, you know, our first frost date. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to cheat with, <laughs> with this. There's all these like calculations that you can do for how to fertilize your lemon trees. Um, and you know, I was looking on it and then I thought that is just, it's too confusing. It's too, it's too much calculations basically for fertilizing a lemon tree. So what I decided to do is I just decided to get this EB Stone citrus food, citrus and fruit tree food, and then just follow the directions on the back of the package. So what it says for citrus and containers, apply one tablespoon for every six inches of pot, every about every four to six weeks throughout the growing season. Just like the roses, you wanna stop before about six to eight weeks before your first frost date, obviously, so you don't have any new growth when frost comes. So that's just what I'm planning to do. This is a 12 inch pot. I'm just gonna put about two tablespoons in every month, the same day that I fertilize my roses. I'm pointing over there because that's where they are. Um, and then I'm just gonna scratch it in and then water it in. And that's basically it. And you can see this lemon tree, um, it, it needs food. It's starting to get a little yellow tinge to it, which means it doesn't have enough nitrogen to to it um, but I can see the buds start to form so I, I think it's time to start fertilizing it so I have this in my gardening calendar it's actually really easy because it's the same day that I'm doing all my other you know like monthly fertilizing and I think that the easiest you can make it for yourself to stay on top of it is probably the best way to go you know so there's tons of right ways to do it that people will say oh yes this is how you have to do it but you know, I, I feel like that there's so much gray area with gardening, um, you know, just find something that works for you. So all I'm going to do, I'll just take you guys along with me. I'm just going to guesstimate about two tablespoons because this is a 12 inch pot. I'm going to sprinkle it around and then scratch it in. So uh, lemon trees like tons of sun and this guy gets tons of sun. I actually have a shade up so that I could film this. Yes, I bought a shade. <laughs> I'm so fancy now. <laughs> so, um, uh, so it needs tons of sun. It needs at least six hours of sun, if not more. And then it needs water, but not too much water. So you don't want to water it until the top layer is totally dry. So I actually have mine on drip and I think that that's fine. I'll check it to make sure that it's not getting too watered this year or underwatered this year, but I think it should be okay. So I put the two tablespoons in and then I'm just going to go ahead and water it with it on shower. And that's it. I'm gonna water my sweet peas while I'm here because these guys aren't on drip yet. I gotta do that. Okay, so let's go to my cut flower garden. I'm going to fertilize the cut flower garden with that Dr. Earth organic fertilizer that I got from Costco. All right, we're back in the front yard. I'm just going all over the place today. Um, this is the stuff I was talking about. This is Dr. Earth Pure Gold, and I use this stuff inside on my houseplants, and I absolutely love it. So when I saw this at Costco, I grabbed it, and I thought that this would be a really good um, option to use other than the manufactured fertilizer that I use. So this says four tablespoons per gallon, so I'm just gonna put a glug of it into my watering can and then I'll go out and I will water my cut flower garden. Oh, shake it. Don't forget to shake it. This doesn't smell as bad as the fish fertilizer, but it doesn't smell good either. <laughs> Okay. All right, that's probably 
really good. All right, so all done with that. My yard is very stinky right now. <laughs> Anybody who walks by is gonna know that I was fertilizing. So I probably should have just used the hose end sprayer. Um, you can dilute that, that Dr. Earth concentrate in that hose end sprayer because that took me four rounds of filling up that um, watering can and it probably would have just been easier if I used the hose end sprayer. So good to know for next time. I don't know how many more times I'm going to fertilize this batch because I am doing a, a, a cut flower succession and I'm actually planning to pull all these out at the end of the month so hopefully they will start blooming and I can cut a whole bunch of flowers off um, before that time you know this is my first year doing the succession so I have to kind of see um, how it works you know it, it, I'm, I'm basically taking you guys along with me as I try all this out so I will put a link to my seed succession plan it's a Google Sheets doc I'll put that in the description below all right, so the last thing that I need to do is I wanna pot up my tiny tomatoes, uh, my micro dwarf tomatoes. And then, like I said, I'm gonna do half of them with the sure start when I pot them up, and I'm gonna do half of them without, which is regular potting soil. So I'm not really planning on using the ones that don't have the sure start because I, you know, I kinda have a feeling how this science experiment is gonna go, but I thought it would be fun just to see the difference, just so um, we can see actually how important the sure start is. So let's go. All right, I have to say, I am just having a lovely day. I am out here on my table in the backyard. It's beautiful, it's way too hot for this. I need to go change after I'm done here. Um, but it's just so nice, it's spring. So here are, let's see, let me just flip it around. Hold on. Here are my tiny tomatoes. Most of these I got from a seed supplier called Renaissance Seeds. Rena is it Renaissance Farms or Renaissance Seeds? I'll link it below. It's this really cool guy from Bloomington, Indiana. Um, and he is like the crazy tomato guy. And he has all these really, really cool varieties of tomatoes. He has like 400 videos on YouTube. Um, I will link him below as well. So I got most of them from there, except for I got two of them from Baker's Creek, which I think, I think I got Orange Hat and Micro Tom from Baker's Creek. Everyone else I got from Renaissance. So they're looking pretty good. I mean, I probably should have potted them up a week or two ago, but I just didn't get around to it. So a lot of the first leaves are kind of yellowing a little bit. Um, I think that they, they just need some soil and then they just need some fertilizer. So this is the fertilizer that I'm going to use, uh, EB Stone Sure Start. This is just what we have at our garden center. So I always use this, this type of stuff. This equates to a spoma, um, what is it called? You guys know what I'm talking about. I'm gonna put on the, <laughs> the Espoma one. Um, so this equates to that one, the, the starter fertilizer. And you know, it's, it's just one that I like. I think it's really, really good. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pot them up in these old cans that I have. And then I have some potting mix right here. And yeah, so I think I'm just gonna do maybe like three of them without the Sure Start, just so that we can see the difference between the two, um, you know, doing it with Sure Start and not. It's just a total non-scientific, uh, experiment Clive's conundrum garden um, they do this often you know but they do it with like horse manure and um, compost you know they do a whole bunch of different non-scientific uh, testings just to see what is best so I'm gonna try and do a little bit of that with this and then really just get these guys in a little bit bigger of a pot all right let's go
All right, so I've got them mostly all potted up. Um, pretty, their roots were so good. It was no wonder they weren't happy. I needed to pot these up a long time ago. So I've got most of them all potted up and then you can see, see I still have a lot of extras because I did about three of each. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take two of them and I think I'm going to do micro Tina and micro Tom, Tina and Tom, because why not? Um, so <laughs> I'll do no sure start for micro Tom and then no sure start for micro Tina. So so I already have uh, Micro Tina potted up with Sure Start and then Micro Tom somewhere, here he is, potted up with some Sure Start. So I'll just put those two with the non Sure Start ones together and then I think that that will be kind of a fun experiment to see what happens, what the difference is using the Sure Start and not using the Sure Start. Okay, so last two. These are the non sure start ones. So I just have to talk it through so I remember not to put the sure start in them. So there's one can, two cans, make a little well, and then we'll grab a micro tina. Nice, good root system. Okay, a little bit more soil. So that was micro tina no sure start i wrote no ss and then finally last one we're gonna do micro tom there we go see him he has an okay root system I am making a mess. Okay, there is micro Tom, no sure start. So I will just put these two right with the other ones. How many do I have? Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 13, including the, no, the two no sure start ones. So I have 11 otherwise, 11 different varieties. All right, and here is my tiny tomato project all set up in my greenhouse. I'll pot it up. I think they're gonna be so much happier out here. They've been inside under my grow, under my grow lights and I think just some natural light will do, will do them well. So you can see I have 11 different varieties all here and then I have the Tom and Tina, Tom and Tina, Tom no sure start, Tina no sure start. So we'll just watch it and see kind of how it goes. Over here I have some of my vegetables, I have some lettuce that I need to get out into my kitchen garden, and then I have um, bells of Ireland that I need to plant out. I think I'm going to plant this out in my cottage garden, and then here's some of my begonias that I'm pre-sprouting. Um, right there, you can see I got a leaf right there. So we're doing really good. It's, it's starting to smell really good in this greenhouse. All right, so that's it, you guys. I'm all done with my big fertilizing day. Um, I've I've had this on my calendar as uh, fertilizing madness. <laughs> just all the fertilizing that I need, the specialty fertilizing, I should say, that I need to get done. So that's something that is really useful in my brain to think about it, is that I have my regular generalized fertilizing that I do, um, you know, all my shrubs, all my perennials, all my annuals that I do on a regular basis. And then separate from that is I have my specialty fertilizing. And so that's kind of what I wanted to differentiate um, between the two because that's how I think of it in my brain. So I hope this was helpful for you guys. I hope it was motivating to watch. If you guys wanna see more videos like this, please consider subscribing. It would really help me out. And I hope you all have a chance to get into your garden today.